Sirens sounded for Israel's dead as the country paused to remember its victims of war and terror with thoughts of those who perished at Hamas's hands on October 7th. Including at Reim, the music festival site where hundreds were killed and kidnapped, and at ceremonies in Jerusalem. Sharon Shirabi's two brothers were kidnapped on October the 7th. One is now dead and the other he wants desperately home. Difficult day for all my family, for all Israeli nation, but we have uh, hopeful that all the soldiers and the hostages will come back home. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu used the service as a rallying cry for continuing the war. It's either us, Israel, or them, the Hamas monsters, he said. This is supposed to be a day free of politics, but with Israeli hostages still in Gaza and the war against Hamas escalating, there's also anger at the government. As Netanyahu finished, someone yelled, garbage, there's nothing to respect, he killed my children. Another held up an Israeli flag with October the 7th written in red. A lot of people in this country don't trust him to the point that I don't know what his interests are. Is he making a decision because this is his political interest? In Gaza, Israeli reports suggest battles with Hamas are fierce, including in northern areas that Israel's military said it had already subdued, evidence that Hamas is far from vanquished. Hanan Bargut and her family are among the at least 360,000 who fled Rafa back to a burned out school in Han Yunus, the third time their family has been displaced. Our circumstances are very difficult, Hanan told a freelance videographer working for CBC News. We escaped from one death to another, from one place to another place. <laughs> With ceasefire talks in stasis, the prospect of an end to the war seems as distant as ever. Chris Brown, CBC News, Jerusalem.